Are you in the process of buying home insurance, or maybe you already have an insurance policy and you are confused about what exactly everything is on a home insurance policy? You're in luck. In this video today, we're gonna to touch on everything that you need to know about homeowner's insurance. Hi there, I am Drew Kinney with the Kinney Insurance Agency. Our agency is located in Vermont and we write a ton of homeowners insurance policies. It's one of the things we specialize in and it doesn't matter if it is a primary home, a secondary home, a seasonal camp, anything like that, we write a lot of this business. Um, there are some key items on a homeowners insurance policy and today we're gonna walk through them and maybe we'll even dive in and take a look at some of those insurance coverage line items on an actual policy and walk through exactly what they are, what they cover and how they do. But there's some key concepts up front that I want to dive into first. First thing is a deductible. You might be familiar with a deductible from an auto insurance policy, but from a homeowner's insurance perspective, it is a little bit similar. You have a few options when you select one of these. Most of the time, you'll see something in the range of 500 to 1,000, 1,500, 2,500, something like that. Um, in Vermont, we don't necessarily see a lot of this, but there are some deductible options out there that are percentage-based. So it could be like a 1% deductible or a 2% percent deductible and what that means is it is a percentage of the value that you set your home insurance policy at um, so if your home is a five hundred thousand dollar home to rebuild you know you would have a one percent deductible of five hundred thousand we don't see that very often in vermont although it's becoming more popular it is more common across the country as you might suspect that's a pretty high deductible when it gets down to it so you know in our agency we tend to write a lot of one thousand twenty five hundred and in some cases up to five thousand if you are picking between deductibles, um, it is an impact on premium. So if you have a lower deductible, it is typically more expensive to insure your home than if you have a higher deductible. Of course, that is because if you have a higher deductible, you're less likely to put into in claims because your deductible will apply. So the way deductible works is if you were to have a claim on your $500,000 house um, or your $400,000 house, it doesn't matter. Um, if you have a $1,000 deductible, um, you would be responsible for the first one thousand dollars in damage and the insurance company would then pay up to the four hundred thousand dollar policy limit or whatever that policy limit is on the policy so if you had a smaller deductible you know you would be more inclined to maybe put in a claim let's say it was a five hundred dollar deductible and you had a one thousand dollar you know storm blew through and blew some shingles off it's a thousand dollars to repair or fix you would be more likely to put that claim in if you had a higher deductible twenty five hundred and only a thousand dollars worth of damage you're not going to put a claim in so it makes sense that the way the policy works is that it is more expensive to have a lower deductible and there is some savings involved with having a higher deductible. The other key concept with homeowners insurance is replacement cost and actual cash value. You want your home to be insured on replacement cost, assuming that it qualifies. And what that means is the insurance company is required to repair or replace your home in like kind and quality. If you were to insure at actual cash value instead of replacement cost, the insurance company would factor depreciation into the value that you would potentially get in a payout for a claim for your damage to your home. So it is imperative that you make sure that assuming your home qualifies, you have replacement costs on your policy. It is critical because you want to replace your home in like kind and quality with new materials. You know, that's at the end of the day, you, the insurance company should be responsible for putting your home back into the state that it was before. And that's kind of the goal. You don't want to have any depreciation or anything like that come into play. Another thing to keep in mind is that not everything is covered on a homeowner's insurance policy. Um, if you look at a homeowner's insurance policy, depending on the form that the policy is in, and we'll dive into that maybe a little bit further, there are certain things that are excluded or not covered on the policy. Some common ones like that are things like earthquake, flood, you know, some of these core bigger ones that you've probably heard of before where, where you have other products out there like earthquake insurance that you could add on to a homeowner's policy or something like uh, flood insurance, which is an entirely separate product. Homeowners insurance policies don't have coverage for every single thing that might potentially happen out there. And the reason is, is it wouldn't be price competitive to do that. You know, flood insurance is not covered under homeowners insurance because homeowners insurance companies can't come up with a premium that is affordable enough for consumers to purchase. And so they exclude that coverage and let you go find it elsewhere on another type of policy. Um, so there are some exclusions on a policy. It's a great thing to re review with your agent what might be excluded. Um, but again, you know, some of the big ones, earthquake, flood, you know, those are kind of like the two main ones. But of course, there's a lot of different nuances and things that go into it. 
So the next thing I think we should do is dive into an actual insurance policy and we'll go through line by line on the coverages. So here we are looking at a live insurance policy. So the very first thing I wanna point out is the policy period. So this is how long this policy is effective. So you look at this one, it goes into effect on the 16th of February and it is good for an entire year. As, you, as we scroll down, the next line items that we'll get into are the specific coverages. So bottom line up front, you'll see the premium on this policy is one thousand two hundred and fifty seven dollars and then we start to break into the specific coverages so on every homeowner's insurance policy you will see these line items so up first coverage a dwelling so this is going to be the value that is assigned to your home to repair or replace it back into that like kind of quality like we talked to before so you'll see on this one they have six hundred and six thousand dollars to repair their home in the event that there's a total loss or a smaller claim that happens you'll see the deductible is one thousand thousand um, dollars and so how do we get to that number that six hundred and six dollars well there are a lot of ways but the way that we typically do it in the agency involves using a cost estimator tool every company usually has one of these their preferred vendor for this um, and we take all the features of the home so things like square footage how many stories attached and detached garages um, we also factor in things like you know, how many bathrooms there are, what's the finish quality of the kitchen, you know, what type of appliances do they have? All these go into trying to get in as accurate as possible of a replacement cost estimate. And that is the number that you are going to use on your policy. Um, and so for this folk, this person, it is $606,000. Coverage B, related private structures. So with homeowners insurance policy, this line item is typically 10% of that $606,000 that we landed on before. So these next couple of line items are usually percentage breakoffs. Um, so once we set that replacement cost of the home, these other line items kind of fall in line. So if they had any other structures on the property, let's say it was a detached garage, or maybe it's, there's some sheds, anything like that, they would have $60,000 available to them in the event something happened to it and they need to repair or re replace it. After that is personal property. So that is your contents, your stuff, everything that you own. You could imagine taking the home, pulling the roof off of it, tipping it upside down, shaking everything out and anything that fell out would probably fall under personal property and contents. Things like your furniture, your clothes, your dishes, things like TVs, all that fun stuff falls under personal property. So with this, it is typically in the range of 50 to 70%. I believe this one tends to land a little higher on 70% for these folks. A lot of times people think, oh, I don't have you know, $424,000 worth of stuff. What I could tell you in the time of a claim, and we've had total burndowns, we usually have a couple every year, nobody has ever come back to us and said, I had too much personal property coverage. The stuff just adds up and it's hard to replace everything that you might have. So this line item is determined again off of that $606,000 and it's usually in the 50 to 70% range of that number and they include it into the pricing. The last item on that first grouping is coverage D, which is additional living costs or loss of use is sometimes called. This is what you would use in the event of a covered claim if you could not stay in your house and you needed to be put up into a hotel or into long-term housing or you had some additional expenses like maybe you had to go out to eat. This is what typically kicks in for coverage to provide you with some money and some dollar amounts to pay for those items. Um, so if you have to go in long-term housing because your home is needs to be rebuilt after a fire, this is the coverage that kicks in and provides it. Next up, we have personal liability. So this would be if somebody were to try to claim that you were negligent in some way and sue you uh, for an event that might have happened on your property or it could happen off of your property. Something like, let's say you didn't shovel your driveway and it was really icy and somebody was coming to your house, they slipped and fell and cracked their head and they said, oh, you know, they were negligent. You know, we are going to now sue to try to recruit that money and maybe some additional money. This is the line item that kicks in to provide you protection for that. Coverage M, medical Medical payments. Medical payments, we kind of refer to it a little bit like a goodwill thing. It's kind of like the first line item of defense to prevent folks from trying to dip into that personal liability line item. So you can imagine if you had a friend over, right? And let's say in that scenario, they slipped and they got hurt. Well, they're not going to try to sue you because you're, the, you're their friend. Um, the company would use that $5,000 in medical payments to say, hey, here, let's both we'll contribute to your high deductible in some way to try to cover the expense of what might have happened to prevent any future dipping into that million dollars worth of liability that's sitting out there. 
Um, liability wise, we often see 500,000 and, and a million are kind of the, the core items that we see out there. Anything less than that, it usually doesn't make a lot of sense because as you can see for a million dollars of liability, it's 29 bucks. Not super, not super expensive. 500,000, you know, it's probably it costs, you know, 25 bucks. So this, it doesn't add a lot or, of money to add higher liability limits. So it usually makes sense to have that extra coverage. Medical payments, typically 5,000, 10,000, something in there is where, you know, we see the most policies. As we scroll down, identity fraud. So there is some coverage for potential identity fraud uh, issues on a homeowner's insurance policy. Again, that varies by company though. Scheduled personal property. So these are, this is going to be items like jewelry. So this person probably has, you know, maybe it's an engagement ring or something that like that that's scheduled on the policy. Could also be art, could be, um, you know, maybe they've got a fancy collection of some sorts. You know, this is where they would add that item on there. You'll see it's not very expensive to add that. They also have earthquake. You kind of heard me reference it before. This is something that is not typically covered on a homeowner's insurance policy, but it's possible to add on. So you can see, you know, that's something they've added on there. And then kind of the last thing that we would highlight on this policy here is this Green Mountain Home Advantage endorsement. So this is an endorsement package that's specific to this company, and it adds a ton of coverages. This is where we typically see the most value in an insurance policy for smaller related claims. It's going to add things like refrigerated property. So if the power went out and you lost a freezer full of food, that would kick in and provide coverage. You know, one of the big ones that adds is backup of sewer and drains. Um, so if you ever had a backup or something like that into the house, this would provide $5,000 in coverage, you know, it, or, you know, whatever that potential endorsement package is on there. Every company has these packages and it's much more cost effective to add one of these onto your policy than to try to schedule each and every little line item that you might potentially need down the road. It makes more sense for the company and for you just to grab one of these packages. You do not want to have a homeowner's insurance policy without one of these. The coverages on there are just too value, whether it's that backup of sewer and drains. A lot of times there's service line coverage. Um, sometimes there's even expanded replacement. So like in the example we used with this policy, they had $606,000 in coverage. If that wasn't enough in a total burn down, you know, expanded replacement would step in and give them another 20%, something like that. So there are some important coverages in here and it's worth the money. So that kind of completes our walkthrough of a kind of a, a basic insurance policy. Again, you know, these things are tailored to you specifically. So it's important that you work with an agency to get the coverage that you need to have for you specifically. Don't just go with, you know, something the masses would have. You know, you want to make sure it's tailored to what your exact needs are. All right. Next up on the insurance policy, you heard me reference it on the walkthrough, but there are these endorsement packages that every insurance company offers um, and they are critical line items to add to your policy. Um, in our agency, we kind of jokingly refer to them as being the thing that make you unhappy about your insurance policy. Um, if you've ever had a claim, a lot of times they're included in these items that you would add onto your policy. A huge one is backup and sewer of drains. Um, for the most part, that is not covered on a standard homeowner's policy. You have to add it onto the policy separately. Um, so something like this is much more cost effective to add it on by adding this endorsement package. There's going to add in all these extra coverages that you would also get along with that backup and sewer of drains. So some common ones on there are service line coverages. Um, there are also some items for, you know, things like cash, um, things like jewelry, um, not to be, you know, confused with, you know, in endorsing a ring on a policy separately. It's just a separate line item that increases your coverage for jewelry. So there are some key endorsement packages. Make sure you review with your agent to make sure you have one of those packages on the policy. All right, so here we are kind of approaching the end. As we walk through the policy, you saw all these things kind of come together. From there, specialty items, things like adding jewelry on, any you know fancy art that you might have, musical instruments, any you know rare collections, things like that. All these can be added, endorsed on the policy, and they're what tailors that policy to you specifically. So make sure you talk with your agent about anything that you want to specifically have covered on your policy. And that starts to wrap up the insurance policy. So you can see these things really aren't cookie cutter. You know, when it comes down to it, you want to make sure that you have the right policy in place to put you back into the situation you were in before at the time of a potential loss. You know, whether that's a total burn down like a fire or a minor thing like a windstorm or, you know, somebody happens to break into your house and, you know, steal a bunch of items. All the factors that we, you know, sort of walk through today on the policy uh, come into play at the time of a claim. So have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to reach out. would love to help you. You know, of course, at the end of the day, 
you know, it's important that you review your coverage options with a licensed agent and make sure you're getting the best possible insurance you can. You don't want to go cheap. This is one of those things where you want to have it be able to step up and provide coverage to you when you need it. So don't necessarily skimp on insurance, but that doesn't mean it has to be expensive either. So this has been a walkthrough of the insurance policy and everything you need to know. Don't hesitate to reach out to Kinney Insurance Agency if you have any questions or want to work with an agent to get properly insured. We'd love to help you get the right protection as simple as possible.